Hello everyone. Hey, welcome back once again. I am Nicodemus Kane. Today is April the 22nd of 2024. This is not an official video. Um, again, I said I didn't want to record official videos until after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, after Passover. The only reason I was really wanting to make this make this video today was because as I was taking a shower this morning I had it running through my head why we celebrate the Passover because I've had to explain this I don't know how many times um, because no one really seems to understand uh, it was it was a heck of an interesting conversation just to tell my mother um, that I would not be eating pork anymore why I couldn't have pepperoni on my pizza and it was the only thing that kept coming to my mind which is something that, first of all, I would definitely suggest that everybody do. But secondly, pray to the Father so that he can tell you what to do with this information. But the thing that I did in order to come to the conclusion that we should stop following these secular pagan holidays and start following the Feast of God again, was I read the Bible for myself. I mean, yes, I had somebody tell me, hey, maybe you ought to read the Bible for yourself first. But once I did that, once I actually read it myself, and let it sink in, and did what everybody in the book tells you to do is to take it literally I came to the conclusion that hey you know maybe there's maybe there's something else going on here in this world um, and that's how I've had to explain it to people the book says straight out don't follow pagan rituals don't do as the pagans do don't worship me don't worship your god this is from god himself don't worship your god the way that the pagans worship their gods that's what the book says i have had not so much arguments but discussions i guess with pastors about this trying to figure this out and everyone has told me oh it's okay god has overcome it he can he can do that he can make pagan festivals christianized and i said that's not what the bible says at all and then I get the whole, well, you know, you shouldn't be taking the Bible too literally conversation. To which I say, well, wait a minute. If we're not supposed to be taking the Bible literally, then none of this matters. Because it could all just be allegory. If you don't take the Bible literally... Christ can just become an allegory of being a better person. And if that's the way it is, then there is no salvation for us. Then there is nothing there. Now, there are times in the Bible where somebody says, Hey, I had a dream, and I prayed to God, and God told me what this dream meant. Here it is. And that's what the Bible does. The Bible says, you know, hey, there's, you know, some ten-headed beast with, you know, whatever 
horns and eyes and you know, whatever it is. And this represents this and this represents that. And the Bible goes out of its way to tell you that. Those that don't understand the Bible and read it like that, they will say, well, see, look at this mythical, crazy, you know, don't, why, why are there unicorns in the Bible? Why is there this? Why is there that? And they don't understand it. But if you read it and pray to the Father to give you that understanding of what it means and then do a little bit of research outside of the Bible, which includes seeing what words meant 200 years ago instead of just now, you get a little better understanding of what's going on. But to have somebody say that, you can't take the Bible literally. Means that all of it just could be nothing. No, I choose... I choose to take the word of God that it actually says in the book itself, hey, don't just take this don't just take this word and, and just use it for nothing. This word means something. Your book says that. Your Bible says this word means something. So that's what I did. I read it. And I took it as fact. I mean, we can go through the. I've, I've gone through this. I don't know how many times about just the simple, the simple part of of not eating pork. Just because it's in the law doesn't mean that God hasn't said it three other times where you're not supposed to when you're not supposed to have it. Am I wrong? Please find find those places in the Bible. And put them in a context outside of the law. And tell me that God is telling you just don't eat pork. Don't eat unclean meat. Unclean meat, period. Not just pork, unclean meat. We've, we've narrowed it down to anything that eats dead things. It's pretty much what it is. I mean, really, it's everything he tells you not to eat. It's, it's anything that's a bottom feeder that eats death. Because there's something to eating the blood of something else. So it, it says that in the Bible. The blood is the blood is not to be consumed. There's something special in the blood. Don't consume the blood. You can have meat, just don't eat the blood. There's something to it. So there's dead things in the world that are put here in this world in order to clean up all the dead stuff. What does God say? Don't eat don't eat those animals. Well, those animals just happen to be bottom feeders. Those are, the, those are the cleanup animals. Don't eat things that eat death. Simple. <laughs> I've even gone into it before about uh, certain animals that you're not supposed to eat. That if you go to other texts, other biblical texts that people say you're not supposed to read, and they go on about how all of these animals could be humans they were transformed from they were transformed from humans elephants and pigs and monkeys come from humans that maybe there's something there i'm not saying there is i'm not saying there isn't but maybe there's a connection there you know there's a reason why pig bodies are so similar to humans i don't i don't know I, there's this whole, there's a lot of people talking about it. If you want to go find that research, man, go look on YouTube. It gets, it gets deep and crazy. Actually, go, you, it's not really, you can't really go to YouTube anymore. I mean, you could go to BitChute and I say good luck. BitChute has become so, I don't know. Most of the, most of the good stuff is buried and BitChute has this serious problem with playing old videos. But trying to navigate the BitChute search engine is a bit of a nightmare. But the stuff's out there. There's reasons that we do these things. But outside of that, I've said, where? Now it says in the law, you will follow my feast days. I get that. Where else in the law? Well, no. 
let's say that too. I'm, I'm, I'm following the wrong path. I was going to be saying something like, where else in the law does it say not to follow pagan, but it does say it in there. Actually, it's, it's it, like the first commandment of the Ten Commandments is to worship no other god other than the Most High. I mean, in a roundabout way. Let me, I'll, I'll look it up for you too. I'm only using... Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'm using one hand because my back is still hurting. Actually, you know what? I woke up really good. And then I did my stretches. And then my back's hurting. It's like, wait a minute. My stretches were supposed to help me, not hurt me. But I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's opening up that where that nerve is. Maybe that's what's going on. But anyways, that's rule number one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What else does God say all throughout the Bible? Do not worship me as the pagans worship their gods. Over and over and over and over. Don't do these rituals. Don't, don't do these sacrifices. Don't do these things. Be as smart as a serpent. Let no man deceive you. Don't let me deceive you. Read the book. I don't know how many times I've gone over this with other people. It, it says it clear as day. Don't do, don't follow pagan rituals. And I still, I still to this day have, there are two, there are two pastors in the family. <laughs> I still have both of them that tell me it's okay. You can have Christmas. You can have Easter. You can have Valentine's Day. You can have Halloween for crying out loud. It's absurd. It's okay. God will make it. God made it better. When? All the way through the book. Every single step of the way it says. Don't follow these pagan rituals. So we don't celebrate. My wife, sadly, she still celebrates. She does it for the kids. Because she's not strong enough spiritually to be able to stand up to her daughter and her grandchildren and say this is wrong now I get that but there is a reason why whenever Christmas and Halloween and, and uh, Valentine's Day and everything else comes around everybody else avoids me because they don't want to hear it from me they've already heard it at least once hey this is the truth man I get ostracized because I speak the truth but then that was another thing that was that was in my mind as I was taking a shower, was this concept of the narrow way versus the broad path. I've I've somewhat touched on this conversation with people that I know, and the overall understanding that I've gotten from other people about it is that. Oh, well, you know, even though there's so many people that believe in God and believe in Christ, they're doing good. They're going to get into heaven. I'm like, how do you know? It's because they're good people. You know, they're, they're doing what Christ wants us to do, and they're doing this, they're that, doing that. I said, okay, is that a broad way or is that a narrow path? So, well, just as long as you have God in your heart. Well, yeah, if you have God in your heart, sure. But then it also becomes this Broadway and narrow path thing. That at one point in time, I, I think it's shifted now because this world has become so evil because people won't stand up for the truth. At one point in time, Christianity was the number one religion in the world. And... In my mind, all I can do is look at that thing, look at that and think, well, of course, you know, at one point in time, everybody was into it. But the overarching Christianity is wrong. We've been following these pagan rituals, he's following these pagan paths. You know, there's a reason why. It's because we're getting to the point now that even, even the pagans, even those people that are not Christians, are 
purposely celebrating these pagan festivals. They, they're enjoying it. The truth has come out, and the pagans have just, oh, they're, they're all over it. But there is this narrow path of people, and I'm not going to give them a name. I'm not going to see their, say that they're like the Hebrew fundamentalists or, you know, the, the what is it? What were they called? The Hebrew Roots. I, I'm not going to give it that name. I'm going to say that a lot of people are just reading the Bible for what it says. And the Bible says not to follow these pagan rituals, not to follow these practices. You cannot Christianize a pagan ritual that celebrated murder and death. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. God doesn't want you to follow that path. He wants you to follow a much more narrow path. And for those of us that are trying, and I know there are some people that are, you know what, there are, there are probably hundreds of thousands of, of people that are following that narrow path, and you won't hear from them. Because they're not in this world. They've exited this world. Not to mean that they're, they're dead. They, they've, they've separated themselves from this world. They're going out and they're speaking the word and they're doing everything they can where they are. But they are not, they are not of this world. How beautiful must that be just to be separated from this world? But for those that are trying to find that narrow path, which I know they're out there, I've talked, I've talked to, I don't want to say I've talked to many, but I've talked to several that are trying to find that narrow path, that are finding that way through that, you know, they, they will do things like this. They will get on YouTube and they will just talk, spread the word, read the Bible, do whatever they can to tell people the truth, to get the, to get the truth out there. The real truth, not the, you know, watered down version of the truth that we've had for however many years. But for those that have been trying, they understand. They understand how this works. To not follow the ways of this world, you cannot christianize a pagan ritual no matter what anybody else says that's not what the bible says at all nowhere in the bible says hey we're going to take a pagan ritual we're going to celebrate it in the name of god your bible says the exact opposite do not worship me as the pagans worship their gods so that's why i don't celebrate easter and that's so hard to tell my family even though I don't talk to my family anymore, the the two members of my family that I were that I have, well, okay, two of the three members of my family that I'm the closest to, have passed away. And to be able to try to talk to my dad about this, he he won't listen. He's, I've tried. It's he's told me it's not for him. He doesn't like the truth stuff. He's told me straight to my face. I don't want to hear the truth stuff. Okay, well, then I'm sorry. I've I've tried the best I can. I still love you. One of these days, you'll come back to me and you'll want to hear it. But I have to wipe my feet off, <laughs> clean the dust off of my feet, turn my back, and I have to walk away. That's a losing fight. But for everybody else that I've had to talk to about this to get them to understand, that has been such a... Oh, that has been such a fight. Talking to other people, like I said, talking to other people, my wife's family, trying to get them to understand why we do it a certain way. I mean, they, they say, you know what, you can do whatever you want, but you're doing it wrong. And I'm like, okay, if you think I'm doing it wrong, that's going to be, be between me and God. That'll be between me and the Father, and he will judge me whenever I get to that point. I said, but I'm going to follow what he told me to do. 
father told me not to follow pagan rituals. Father told me to follow his feast days. To understand the truth of what it means. To not let any man deceive me. So that's what we're doing. And I know I've made, how many times have I made this video? I bet you I've made this video four or five times now. Where I have to explain myself. And you know what? I'm getting tired of explaining myself. So for anyone else out there that doesn't understand, that may come to this channel. I've had several people. As soon as I came back in, there's been a lot of people that have said, hey, we missed you. And you know what? I'm glad that I give people that. I think it's it's always a little weird for me to think that there are people that I'm touching and giving them you know, something worthwhile. I, because I think it's just me just rambling into the open. But hey, that's cool. You know, I, I thank God I'm giving you something that you can, you can use. There are other people I know for a fact over the years that when I turned slightly and started preaching a different word than they have heard or they have understood and they have asked me why I do things a certain way, and I've told them, I've had them tell me, well, I can't listen to you anymore because you're not spiritually where I am. And hey, that's fine too. Am I doing this right? Probably not. Uh, you know, and I tell everybody that. Even for the people that are listening to me, those, those you know, people that, that came and said, hey, glad to hear you're back. Sorry, I had to sneeze there. Well, for those people that um, are listening to me and came came to or came back to to hear what I have to say again, I tell you, don't listen to me. Find it for yourself. Read a book first. Read the Bible first. Pray to God. Then come back to me. And if there is something that's different, hey, let's talk about it. Because we're all trying to figure this out. We've all been lied to for years. Decades. Centuries. Century. Can you imagine that? Centuries of lies. I was thinking about that the other day. Centuries of lies. I don't think it's millennia. I think it's centuries. You know, people will... Um, I'm still I'm still into this millennial reign of Christ thing and... and you know, whether or not we actually went through it or not. Well, I've talked about that. I'm still contemplating it in my head. There's still questions. I've, I've said that in the last video. But it's not like, it's, it's definitely not like Christ died 2,000 years ago. And for 2,000 years, we've had lies. Because I don't think lies can keep up that long. I really, I really don't. I think that you can keep concepts. I think that you can, you can go back and find all these, these pagan symbolisms and pagans, pagan whatevers. But I don't think they can hold us for 2,000 years. I don't think they can hold us for 4,000 years. What I think they happen, what I think happens though, is that after... After so many hundreds of years, I think it starts falling apart. I think people start finding the truth. You have to find the truth. I mean, seriously. I think that's why it's starting to break down. I think that's why people are starting to wake up to it now. It's because we're starting to understand concepts. And yes, it's in the Bible that we're supposed to, we're supposed to, knowledge is supposed to increase and we're supposed to, everything's supposed to be opened up. That's why I'm having a problem with whether we are on the front end or the back end of this millennial reign thing is because everything seems to be happening as if it's before the time, but then after, I don't, I don't want to get into this conversation. This is not a conversation I wanted to get into. I'm still doing my concepts. This was supposed to be just about Passover and Easter. <laughs> uh, I lost my, completely lost my train of thought. Um, anyways, though, 
for our purposes, and we're probably celebrating on the wrong day, and we're probably celebrating at the wrong time, and you know, we're probably everything, everything is probably wrong because I've already said it before is that we have no clear proof of anything anymore. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Just because they say it's Saturday doesn't mean it's Saturday. Just because they say it's Monday doesn't mean it's Monday. Your Sabbath could be on a Wednesday. I don't know. We don't know. They've completely taken over everything. We have no clue. So what does that mean? Well, we have to find out what it is. Now, in the Bible, it does say there is a caveat. If you cannot celebrate these feasts on the day that they were, pray to the Father that he lets you celebrate them at a different time, and he will let you celebrate them at a different time. It says that in the book. It says there was there were these guys that had to go. They They had to bury a body or something. And after they buried the body, they had to be put away for a week. So they went to David. I think it was David um, or Joshua. I don't remember who exactly it was. They went to him and they asked him, they said, we can't celebrate the Passover because we were dealing with a dead body. We have to be put away for a week. So then the guy they were talking to, he said, well, let me go pray on it. He went to pray on it. He came back and he said, okay, you guys can celebrate next week. Pray to the Father and ask Him what you're supposed to do. But more than anything else, understand the holidays of this world, the holly days, the days of the holly tree, the holly tree that they take the branches from and they use to create magic spells. Holly days, there's, there's meaning in all words. The holidays of this world that you're supposed to be separated from are all pagan rituals. They started as pagan rituals. They're still pagan rituals. And they have nothing to do with the Most High. The feast days of your Father, the Most High Yahuwah, that are set at very specific times that you can celebrate in different times if you ask the Father because you were either busy or you were not sure when they were supposed to be done. Remember that. Because God will forgive all ignorance. But now that you know, it's on you. But the feast days, the Father says, You will celebrate until the end of time. It even says in the Bible, you will be celebrating these after the judgment. You'll be celebrating the feast days after the judgment. Think about that. And not only that, but every single one of the feast days lines up with the story of Christ. The birth, the death, the resurrection all of them line up. There are reasons. There are reasons why these things are like this. And I could have gone into uh, why we why we have spring cleaning. Because that's what you do. That's what the Father told us to do, is to get rid of all of the... Well... According to him, it's all the spiritual junk in your life and in your in your house. But you're getting rid of your leavening. It's, it's spring cleaning. Everybody's done it. Everybody does it. So at one point in time, there were enough people in this world that did spring cleaning that they they may not have understood why they were doing it. But they were doing it because the Hebrews were doing it, not the Jews. The Hebrews were doing it. We're doing it. And a lot of other people were doing it too. There's a reason why people go camping in September and October. Because there's a feast day that tells you to stay in tents. 
See, these things have always happened in my family, and I never understood why. No one ever told me. No one ever, under, you know, everybody was always like, oh, we, we do spring cleaning. You know, when April comes around, we clean the house out. It's like, okay, that kind of makes sense to a point. But then my family always went and they did vacations in September and October. They always went camping. I always thought it was crazy. Why, why are you camping in October? That's just what we've always done. Without knowing the Bible, what the Bible really says, these people went camping not knowing why they did it. Because it's ingrained in our system. Because people have done it for years and years and years. And you may not understand why, but it's there. It's always been there. It's a renewal. Was this around 4,000 years or 3,000 years ago, whenever the Bible was written? I don't know. Uh, no, seriously, though, what, did somebody base the Bible off of these things that people used to do way, way back in the day? People magically went camping in the fall two, three thousand years ago, and somebody was like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna say that we're gonna write the Bible around that." Is that what happened? Think about these things. Really think about these concepts. I have to stop. I have to go eat. I gotta get some breakfast. Um, this is be this will be the last day I get to have my Cheerios for a week. It's gonna be fruity pebbles from here on out, at least for a week. Like I said, um, <laughs> no, I, I, uh, we have this joke where um, we say that Passover comes over and it's all fruity pebbles, fruit, and tacos. <laughs> while while planning our meals out, I mean, we have meals. We, you know, we. We didn't plan as much this year as we usually do because we have so much other stuff happening. You know, we have we have the grandkids now, and we have um, my mother's probate, my grandmother's probate, um, other things that have come around. So we didn't get to plan out Passover. And plus, Passover is so late in the in the in the month, but we. Uh, we usually pa we usually plan out the meals pretty good, but this year we just kind of did it on the fly. So it's like steak and potatoes, and we're gonna do like a chicken stir fry night. It's it's very strange how every other culture has has kosher meals <laughs> that are good for Passover, <laughs> except for except for America. I swear we went into a um, we went into Walmart yesterday. Was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. And uh, we went into Walmart, and I said, it is one day before Passover. And they had this display. The, the most I've ever seen the amount of, of pepperoni in my life. For some reason, our, our community... Our Walmart and our Kroger cannot stock pepperoni. Now, we get the turkey pepperoni, of course, but even the regular pepperoni, we can't find it here. We don't eat it. It's pork, duh. But for some reason yesterday, they decided to put out a display in one of the big freezer things. Just massive amounts of pepperoni. Right beside it was smoked sausages. Uh, and then there were, what was it? Pork chops everywhere Ugh. and sausage and bacon. Just the whole, the whole thing that they made was just nothing but pork. And I said, that wasn't like that a week ago. Isn't that amazing how Passover's coming in and they immediately start suggesting you eat pork. Now, of course, there's a lot of people that are going to say, well, you know, we can we can eat pork now because the Bible says, well, I've already gone through this a million times. There's no place in your Bible where it says that he got rid of unclean meats. It's not. I'm sorry. There's not. 
John himself had a had a dream about the end of the world where they said unclean meats. The angels that he was talking to said the words unclean meats. Do you really think that God got rid of unclean meats or do you think you're just not understanding what was said during the three times where they had talks about what goes into your stomach? Go read the Bible. Read the Bible. Read it slow. Ask the Father to give you understanding. You have to understand these things. And I'm not saying it's a salvation. Maybe it is a salvational issue. I don't know. I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. I'm going to tell people that, hey, maybe you ought to, before you come to me and tell me that I'm doing it wrong, maybe you ought to go back to the Bible and we should really have a conversation about this. Because this ain't right anymore. Ain't none of this right anymore. Narrow path, broad ways. All right, anyways, I got to stop this stuff. Um, sadly, it is Earth Day, which means you will be pummeled with... You will be pummeled with how bad of a human being you are. Because you are destroying the creation. Well, you know what? You're not destroying the creation. Evil men in this world are destroying the creation. Because they're making money by destroying the creation. Evil men are trying to tax the hell out of you to get more money in order to save the creation because they worship the creation because they know their time is short and they know that this life will be better than burning in a pit of, in a pit of fire. So they're doing everything they can to save this world. Do not worship the creation. We are meant to go out and cultivate this world. We're not meant to destroy it, and you're not destroying it. Other people are. Again, mega corporations run by evil, greedy bastards are the ones that are hurting the world. And it's those same evil, greedy bastards that are destroying the world that are trying to tell you that you are destroying this world and you need to be taxed more because you're the bad guy. Not them, you. Always keep that in mind. I could be canceled just for just for my whole channel could be taken away just because I say that, just because I I choose to believe the truth rather than the lie, but you know, you're living in an evil world. It's up to you whether you stand up to it or not. I the one thing I, I've said before is I, I, inside of inside of the Bible, God said that he will turn his judgment away if the people will turn back to him. Revelation doesn't have to happen. If we turn back. But he knows it will happen because, well, people are the way that people are. So I don't I don't know I don't know where else to go with that. I I have a lot more to say about that, and it it will put a lot of people on a spot, and it will make a lot of people upset. But you know it is what it is. All right, I gotta stop. I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Um, if you celebrate, enjoy your Passover. If you celebrate, definitely enjoy your feast of first fruits. I love the fact that every time we celebrate Passover, we have a tree in the backyard that blooms every Passover, which is perfect. I love it. I think it's amazing. Um, it's one of those trees that, you know, it only blooms for a week and then it dies. Well, that's, or it doesn't die. It, it blooms for a week and then it turns green. All the flowers die off to what it is. But we have one of those in the backyard where we moved and I love it. I think it's great. Uh, we take pictures of the kids. We've been taking every every year that we've been here, we try to get pictures of the grandkids in front of it. 
because I want to have a, you know, a yearly, you know, pictures in front of that tree because it's so good. Um, but the Feast of First Fruits, that's when your father came back. That's when Christ came back, rose from the dead to save us all, to remarry us back to God. That's why he died in the first place. It's a love story. I've said that before too. But if you uh, definitely enjoy the Feast of First Fruits, and if you if you celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread, good luck. <laughs> that's, that's all I got to say. I, well, you're not supposed to complain about it, and I don't really complain about it, because I'm going to tell you what, I wind up losing 10 pounds over this week. Because I eat better in one week than I do the entire year. So enjoy. I, you know, it is a little tough, but it is what it is. And I've said it before. I said, how can you, how can you be mad at a spiritual festival that gets you to stop eating bread? Not only gets you to stop eating bread, but you actually start eating better. And you come out on the other side losing 5, 10 pounds. Every year. Every year I've done this. 5, 10 pounds. I'm like, dude, what the heck? There's something to it. All right. I shall talk to you all later. God bless. Take care of yourselves. I shall, uh, I don't know. I don't know when I'll be on again. We'll see.